life and contradictions. Human life is full of contradictions and these contradictions are not bad. Instant contradictions create the balance between the pair of opposites. Look at the magnetic poles. Both North and South Pole repulse each other and attract one another, thus maintain the inner balance. One of the basic sutras of love says that life is based upon the rules of opposites. Life does not oppose its contradictions, this we have to understand. Rather it works in collaboration with its counter forces. Ordinarily it appears that if your enemy dies, you will be a happier man. But you do not know that with the death of your enemy, something within you which existed entirely on account of the enemy also dies. Therefore it happens many times that you lose much more by the death of an enemy than by the death of a friend. The opposition of the enemy awakens the challenge within you and the mutual hostility gives rise to and nourishes those qualities within you which would have otherwise remained dominant. That is why Lao Tse had said, any friend will do but choose your enemies wisely. Friends do not influence our lives as much as enemies do because a friend can be disregarded but we cannot afford to neglect an enemy. Certainly we cannot afford to neglect an enemy. We can forget a friend but an enemy is never forgotten. It never dawns on us. However, that an enemy can influence our lives. Mahatma Gandhi would have never become a Mahatma had it not been for the British. It was the opposition of the British rule that brought him into being. Great men are born when a country is in a great trouble. It is the calamity that causes great men to be born at night and not vice versa. The hour of calamity and the hour of tension produces great men. Hitler has written somewhere, no leader is born without a great conflict. Therefore greater the leader, the great should be the battle. You cannot name a single leader who was born in times of peace. So he who desires to be a great leader has to make arrangement for a great conflict. Life works on laws of opposites. Where the contradiction is visible, and the collaboration on which it actually works is not. Let us examine this from different aspects in order to understand it better. If we were to remove the character of Ravan from the epic Ramayana, nothing would remain in the epic except Ram, and with him alone it would not be possible to construct the narrative. Ram could have existed on this earth without Ravan, but then Ram of the epic would have been lost completely. It is the very challenge of opposition that brings out the resilience and temperance of Ram's character and reveals the brilliance of his personality. Ravan made a great contribution towards the exaltation of Ram. It would not have been possible for either Ram or Ravan to be born without each other. 
they grow with each other's support this is the truth but those who give things superfluously see them to be enemies opposed to each other and this is what your so called learned people are all those who comments on ramayan they exalt ram and overlook the significance of ravan in the growth of ram the profound reality of life is however that they are partners it is not necessary that they themselves should be aware of this but on a very subtle plane these seeming opposites are partners who shares collaborators and friends not only is life not formed without the opposites but it does not develop without the opposites the opposite is inevitable sigmund freud has discovered a priceless truth he says we also hate those who we love this was a startling discovery even for freud himself it was a terrible blow for all mankind specifically for lovers lovers cannot believe that they are capable of hatred towards those whom they love the fact is however that all lovers know this within themselves though they never admit it therefore fried was resisted for a long time ultimately he could not be proven wrong gradually the truth was accepted simone wells an american writer she wrote a play called the intimate enemies and she calls husband and wife as intimate enemies this is a strange title but this is how it is those whom we love certainly we also despise for love cannot stand without hatred opposite pole gives it a, a force if you love somebody and you analyze it honestly you will find yourself loving and hating alternately you hate in the morning love in the afternoon hate in the evening and again love at night your love is periodical the one you quarreled with in the morning and decided that it was impossible to live with you again reconcile with and swear you would be lost without the ancient prophets of love have declared that love is complete and perfect only when there is no strife between the lover and the beloved fried however says that the greater the love the greater the strife between the lovers if there is no strife between two lovers according to fried they are not in love really and in fact they are just fooling themselves if you do not fight with your wife or husband it means your relationship has vanished long ago so much so that there is no need for a strife anymore fried is not talking about the spiritual love he is talking about that which passes for love in this our society what we generally know as love in this so called love that we know a strife is an inevitable part but lovers and married couples want there to be no strife no conflict in their relationship then love would be bliss but they are not aware of the fact of life the day strife ends love will end also in fact conflict cannot be ended by the sort of love we indulge in conflict exists because of expectation great expectation 
the greater the love the more will be the expectation the greater the expectation the greater will be the frustration and when there is frustration there is conflict if there is no expectation or no demand on the lover or no more hopes pinned on the other all conflicts will stop immediately then we accept life as it is but fried says great lovers cannot live in peace another unique personality of the west desade has said love is an illness he calls love an illness because we invite love and hatred is there instead love and hatred are two sides of the same coin therefore hatred will go on the side by side with love hatred cannot stand on its own if you think you have hatred towards someone you are mistaken because of the simple fact that hatred cannot exist alone you can hate only that person for whom you still have some measure of love if you try and analyze your feelings about someone you really hate you will find some strings of love that unknowingly tie you to him if all the ties of love are broken all means of hatred have also vanished and we are tied to both our friends and our foes for the friend there is love outside and hate within for the foe there is hate without and love within our ties with both are however the same this may be difficult to understand because we have great expectations for love let us try to understand this from different angles a man toils all day long now according to our reasoning a man who has toiled throughout the day should find it impossible to relax at the night he who is used to working all day should pass his nights also in work the fact is however that he who toils throughout the day sleeps profoundly at night sleeps profoundly at night the man who does not exert himself throughout the day should find no difficulty in relaxing at night because his experience of relaxing throughout the day should be good practice for sleeping at night but the person who relaxes in the day finds it difficult to sleep at night actually he who toils all day long accumulates the opposite aspect it attracts the opposite and the opposite is relaxation he who relaxes accumulates the opposite of relaxation so he who relaxes in the day toils at night by changing sides time and again he cannot sleep it is always advised not to sleep long during the day otherwise you cannot fall asleep in the night we cannot escape the opposite the opposite is always standing by if you wish to sleep at night you shall have to exert yourself in the day the greater the exertion the deeper the sleep will be natural one pole creates the need for the other pole so a very interesting thing happens those who work very hard and have no time for relaxation attain the height of relaxation and those who have all the means to relax to them relaxation is very difficult do what they mean they cannot relax at all unfortunately we live by our superfluous standards 
we say we must relax in the day in order to know how to relax at night. This is a straight and simple logic, but it has nothing to do with life. Life is full of contradictions. This is just the same as saying we should not have any conflict with those whom we love. But life exists in opposites. Just like electricity exists because of its negative and positive poles. If we take away one, the other gets lost simultaneously and there cannot be any illumination. But it is very difficult to accept the opposites. He who accepts the opposite is indeed spiritually on the path. Lao Tse calls such a person wise. One who maintains the balance between the pairs of opposites. To accept the opposite means that if today you have come and paid respect to me, I should accept the fact that at some level within you, this respect is also gathering towards me. This fact cannot be escaped or ignored. If I accept your respect, I should also be prepared to receive this respect from your hands at a later date. If I accept your obeisance with full knowledge of this fact, your reverence will give me no pleasure because I know that sometimes or the other you are going to do the opposite. Similarly, your disrespect will not make me unhappy either. Deep within your reverence, I shall spy the seeds of irreverence. And deep within your irreverence, I shall see the spark of reverence. If a man hurls a shoe at me or abuses, why should he take so much trouble? If he is not concerned with me, surely there is some connection between him and me somewhere. The shoe he throws at me is much more expensive than the garland that another person puts around my neck. This man's leaning towards me is great and so is his restlessness. He is bound to do something or the other for me. If I become aware of trouble he is taking for me, the prick of his disrespect will not hurt me. And if I become aware of the other side of the coin, when I am honored and respected, the illusion of reverence will vanish. Remember this, and if I become aware of the other side of the coin, when I am honored and respected, the illusion of reverence will vanish. Then both respect and disrespect appear to be two sides of the same coin as meaningless. And in that understanding you go beyond the duality and the opposites. He to whom this becomes clear transcends both sides. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells Arjun, Yogi is one who goes beyond the pair of opposites, which is exactly the same thing as I am saying. We are bound by the pairs of opposites. To go beyond this, to see disrespect in the respect, to see hate in love and love in hate, is the way that you are not affected by either of the two. And in that very moment, you attain to transcendence, you go beyond. Life is bound by opposites from all directions. When we see one side of life, we forget the other. It is this fundamental error that is the greatest misfortune of mankind. When we are looking at one aspect of life, 
we become completely oblivious of the other without looking the two sides and remaining unconcerned of the two you cannot attain to transcendence then the path of innerness the path of spirituality is transcendence when we look at a flower we never glance at the thorn when we look at the thorn we forget the flowers and the flowers and the thorns grow on the same tree on the same branch they are fed by the same channel they are alive because of the same roots the same gardener waters them and the same sun sends its rays towards them they come from the same existence deep within they are one but when we look at the flower we forget the very existence of the thorns and the more we forget the thorns the sharper it pricks then when the thorn pricks the flower vanishes from our vision and we are only aware of the pain of the thorn we even forget that it was because of the flower that we had to suffer the prick of the thorn remember this is an important fact we even forget that it was because of the flower that we had to suffer the prick of the thorn we enjoyed the aroma of the flower and the prick was the result we enjoyed the aroma and the beauty and the, of the flower so much that we forget all about the thorn and the scot prick our vision is always partial partial vision is ignorance partial vision is not wrong but it is not complete it sees only one half of reality and the other half seems so contradictory that we cannot relate the one to the other on the face of it it is difficult to relate to the opposite you can never imagine that a person who clings to your neck today and vows that you are all that means anything to him in the world and life would be meaningless without you would push a knife in you logic needs logic needs consistency but in life there is no consistency how can this very person kill you but the reality of life is that he can This is the very depth of life. He who has no relationship with you does not bother to kill you. He is not interested in you. Can you make someone an enemy without first making him your friend? Also, one who becomes your sworn enemy could not have just been a slight acquaintance. the proportion is equal the greater the friendship the greater the enmity machiavelli in his book the prince has written the greater the intimacy the more cautious you should be of your friend this is a cunning advice but it has some truth in it the thicker the friendship the more vigilant we should be because the danger is greater mcavely says if you do not want your enemies to know the facts take care that your friends do not know them he has also said do not treat your enemy in a way that you may regret some day when he becomes your friend Do not treat your enemy in a way that you may have to regret some day when he becomes your friend because an enemy can become a friend any day life undergoes changes every moment nothing is stable life swings from one extreme to the other the opposites are united in the profound depth of the existence However, on on its surface, they are far apart. He who sees 
Only the surface of life cannot understand Lao Tzu because he talks about the ultimate polarity of the existence. Lao Tse talks about the ultimate polarity of existence. Lao Tse represents the profoundity of love.